Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at indefinite integration and definite integration. We're going to start off with some examples and then we'll talk about the general case. So if we first look at indefinite integration, an example of this would be the integral of 2x dx. And now what's characteristic here is that we don't have any limits that we're evaluating at. So we simply integrate a function and we're going to get another function. So if we just integrate this, uh, you do the opposite of differentiation. So you raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, and this turns to x squared. And then with indefinite integration, we always need to add a constant, plus c. And the reason we do this is because if you think about differentiating, which is the opposite of integration, then whenever we differentiate constant, it's just going to vanish. So all these functions for all the possible constants are a solution to this integral. So on the other hand, definite integration is pretty much the same, except we have limits. So an example would be the integral of 2x dx, but say we have limits 1 and 2. So the approach here is similar, but slightly different. We start off the same by just integrating the function, which we said was x squared. And now here, it doesn't matter if we have a constant or not, because it's going to cancel. Um, and then, once we've integrated this function, we evaluate it at the limits. So we usually uh, use this notation of brackets, and on the bottom we have the lower limit, and on the top we have the upper limit. And then once we've done that, it's just a case of evaluating these limits at this function. So we start off with the top limit, and we get 2 squared, and then we subtract the answer when we evaluate the bottom limit, so 1 squared. And then this comes out to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. So we see in definite integration, we actually end up with a number. Whereas in definite integration, we get a function. So now we've seen some examples, let's talk about the general form of these two types of integration. So for indefinite integration, we're going to be integrating a function, and I'm going to call it f dashed of x dx. And I'm just going to denote this because I'm going to call f dashed the derivative of f. So when we integrate this, we get a function, which is the antiderivative, so just f of x, plus c. And then for definite integration, it's kind of the same story, except we have these limits. So the limits I'll just call, in general, a and b. And again, we're integrating some function, f dashed of x dx. So starting off, it's the same. We integrate the function to get f of x. We don't need the constant this time. But this time, we actually evaluate this function at the limits, a and b. And so if we do this, just using the same strategy up here, we start with the top limit and subtract from the bottom limit. This is actually going to give us f of b minus f of a. And so we see we always get a number here, and we always get a function here. And the last connection I want to make is that definite integration actually corresponds to something geometrically. So if you were to sketch the function, um, if for a general function, if we call this one f dashed, this is the one we're integrating. And if we integrate this between the limits a and b, this is a and this is b, then definite integration actually corresponds to calculating the area under this function between the function and the x-axis. So this has a geometric interpretation. So now we're just going to look at one more example involving the areas under the functions. Okay, so for this example, we're going to start off with the geometric problem, and then we need to convert this into integration. So the question here is to find this area. And we're given this function, which is x squared plus 1. We're given some limits, 1 and 2. And so to calculate this area, we just need to integrate this function between these limits. So the area, which I'll call a, this is just the integral between 1 and 2 of the function. So x squared plus 1 dx. And so now we just need to calculate this integral, raise the power by 1, and divide by the new power, x cubed divided by 3, plus integral of 1 is always x. So this is the antiderivative of this function. Then we just need to evaluate this at the limits, which are 1 and 2. So start off with the upper limit, 2 cubed divided by 3, plus 2. And I can write this in brackets. That's the first term. Subtracted from uh, the lower limit. So we put 1 cubed divided by 3, plus 1. That's the second term. And so we just need to simplify this now. So 2 cubed is 8. So we have 8 over 3, plus 2. And I can write 2 as 6 over 3. Just so these two fractions have the same denominator. That's the first term. Second term, this is 1 over 3. And similarly, I can write 1 as 3 over 3. And then we can just simplify these fractions. So 
adding these two together, this is 8 plus 6, which is 14, divided by 3. The second one is 4 over 3. So our answer is going to be 10 divided by 3. And this is the area that we were asked to find. So this is the area under this curve between the limits 1 and 2.